DxO have just launched the latest and probably best version of Photolab 8. In this short overview, I will demonstrate some of the highlights in this version. DxO have not had any input or influence in my opinion for this review. However, I need to disclose that I have received an extended timed version of Photolab 8, which I will use to produce a series of more detailed tutorials. I am not on an affiliate scheme from DxO, and this ensures my opinions are not influenced from any financial gain. So let's start this review by looking at the new Hue mask. And for this, I want to change these yellow peppers and make them into green peppers. But I want to select, if, select only the yellow peppers. So let's go to the Hue mask and we can find that up here under the local adjustments. Click on that and scroll up to the top. And right in the middle here, we have the new Hue mask. Let's click on that. And then we take our cursor over and select the yellow colours. And here we've got a mask that's been applied on there. Now unfortunately the colour of the mask is actually blending in too much with the yellow so I can't really see what's going on. So let's change the colour of the mask and we'll choose a blue. Uh, click OK and there we can see more of what's not being selected in the mask. And we can adjust the mask by going to the mask options and clicking on these small icons here and it just extends the colours on there but it's also extended the colours at the top here. Um, so really we only want to selectively choose the yellow peppers. Um, for this we can now go to the second option here. We've got at the moment a colour overlay. And what we can do is go to a black and white overlay. And now we can see all the areas that have been selected by the mask. There's quite a lot here. So I can reduce that slightly. And there we go. We've still got all the yellow selected. And now if we select the eraser tool, which is on the right here, and we can just proceed to erase the various sections. Let's make a brush a little bit bigger and and go. Don't worry if you're going over the edges here. It's, it's not going to show. So I'm just going to do a very rough rough outline of the or rough arrays of all the excessive parts. We'll make the brush a little bit smaller and take out those bits there. And I think that should be OK there. Um, let's view the... We can view the mask again. And now we can change the colour. So let's scroll down to the bottom. And we'll use the HSL wheel. And we can just move the slide around until we've got the desired colour. Um, so I want this green, but these greens look a little bit too uh, glowing almost like the nuclear powered peppers. So what we can do now is go to the various settings like exposure. We need to make that slightly darker. So grab hold of that, make it darker and until we get sort of the right look for our peppers, put a bit of black in there as well, just to make it darker. I just need to fine tune it all. I'm going to add some contrast to it as well as it's looking a little bit flat. And that's looking OK. And what we need now is more texture on the, the peppers. So we'll use the micro contrast and just slide that up a bit. And that just gives a little bit more form. Uh, it looks like a little bit more light coming onto the peppers. There we go. It's got a little bit of shine on them. And that's looking fairly convincing. And as you can see, the Hue mask has actually selected this really well. We've got all the selections in there. Um, that's a new Hue mask in a nutshell. So now let's look at the next new feature, which is the Deep Prime XD2S. On this photograph, which was shot on a micro four thirds camera with an ISO of 25,000 ISO, and that's really pushing the outer limits of this small sensor size and undoubtedly we've got a lot of noise in the photograph here. 
So let's choose a section of it here, this radio set, and we can see all the colored noise around surrounding it. Um, let's remove this with the new Deep Prime and we go to the Detail tab and we'll, we'll select the Noise Reduction. You can see also on most of these um, tabs here, on most of these options, a flyer will come out giving the explanation what is happening on this particular option. So let's click on the Deep Prime and I'm going to close that down there. And we can see that the color noise has all been taken out, but we still have a very, very noisy image. If we click on the Deep Prime XT, we've still got that very noisy image. So there is another option where we can actually view the noise reduction in action, and that's via the loop here. Press the letter S or just click on the loop, magnify, and the box will appear, and this will give you the a noise reduced version of it. Here we can actually see a larger view by clicking on there. So now we've got more of the image in and we can see the vase in the background as well. It takes a couple of seconds to update. There we go. Um, we can also view it out of different magnifications. We can go to 200% if we like. And there we go, 200%. It shows you how much noise has been um, eliminated. So I'm going to put it back to 100%. Now one of the key advantages of this loop is also that we can use various other options on here. So we can go to the Unsharp Mask and we can click on that and add more sharpening. So we've got it at the moment, we've got it set to 200 at, at a radius of 98. And that's giving a nice sharpness. If I take that off, you can see how much sharpness is being applied. But as you can also see, the surrounding area has got the sharpness applied, but it's only the area within the loop that you can see the actual effect of it. There's also a lens softening option here. So if we click on that, sometimes it does over exaggerate it. So we can reduce that down to a more desirable level. And so you can still pick up the sharpening and it reduces the lens softening. And if we go back to 200%, you can see how much detail has been bought out in the glasses behind, oops, in the glasses behind there. And if we turn that all off, we take the denoising off, and you can see there the effect that the denoising has had, taking all the noise reduction out there. As I say, it does take a couple of seconds to sort of generate it. There we go. It's absolutely fabulous. It's a terrific implementation of this denoising uh, of Deep Prime. DxO does have a photo raw denoising facility that doesn't feature the new XT2S. Um, possibly it will implement that at a later date. As it stands here, this is an extremely good feature. And also, I love this loop where we can have instant preview of what's going to be affected by the denoising. So let's round off this review with a short tutorial on how to convert a black and white negative into a black and white positive. Now this image was scanned in using a camera and a slide copier and the negative was just photographed. As you can see the image is quite old, we've got a lot of staining on the negative as well. So let's start off by rotating this to the right and we can do that by pressing the control and R key rotates the image to the right. And I want to convert this into a positive. So we'll grab the tone curve and we'll take the bottom slider, bottom left, which is usually the dark area. And now we'll take the top right there and bring it down. And here we've got our positive. Now obviously it's a very flat image, so we need to adjust the tone curve. So we're going to bring that in there and we're going to just pop a little bit of highlights in there, stop it looking too flat. And maybe just put a little bit of mid, a mid tone in the middle area. OK, we've still got the color cast in there, so we need to convert this to a full black and white image. So we go on to here and we've got color black and white rendering. Just click on the black and white and that takes all the color cast out of there. 
and I'm going to also now trim up the image via the crop tool. We'll go to unconstrained option there and just select the image area that we want. And just leave it on the bottom there. Now the image is still looking a bit wishy-washy. We can improve it considerable. We'll press on the close button there, which now renders the crop for us. And we'll go on to the final watermark and effects. What we're going to do is select the grain setting, which is set to color, color rendering. And we're going to change it to black and white film. And now we have a selection of films that we can use, utilize here. So I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select Ilford HP 5. And let's just zoom in on the image a little bit, go to one to one and bring it down. Now this was shot on film, so we can see that the, the grain structure is already there. Um, sharpness is not as clinical as a digital file, but it has a certain quality about this. I just want to increase the grain on this. I uh, know digital photographers are always looking for ways of reducing noise. In fact, as a, a long-term film user, I'd like to see noise. And so we're going to intensify the noise a little bit there just to highlight the grain. And we've got quite a nice texture on there. It gives it that sort of filmic quality. I'm also going to put a little bit of a, a vignette on there because we've got lots of light area in the back there. So we're going to put a creative vignette on there. I'm just going to intensify it slightly. Now, bearing in mind that we've actually reversed the negative, so we've actually got to go the opposite way of most sliders. So to make things lighter, we've got to go to a darker area. And the same with the vignette. We just go to dark. Don't overdo it too much there. And now I'm going to go back to my tone curve and make some further adjustments on there. I want a little bit more depth in the black, dark areas. And maybe we can bring down the, if I can grab hold of it there, there we've got a nice bit of depth there. And I'm also going to apply a little bit of vignette on there. I'm going to select the manual option there and just put a bit of bit more intensity on there. And there we have our finished image. Very simple. Um, with a bit of practice, you can create some fan fantastic looking images, nice tonal quality, needn't all be hard grain either. And these are all scans from old negatives that were shot some 40 years ago. And today, via DxO, both in Photolab 8 and more importantly, in the Nick collection, Silver FX, you can create some stunning black and white pictures with their, their software.